switch. Let me get a quick test here. Almost, possibly. Come on, Twitch. There we go. All right, we're good. Okay, 257. Okay, where are we? Let me find the record button. Okay, set up. You ready? Yep. Okay, three, two, <clears throat> one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 257. That's right, 257 here on the inter... I'm going to stop. Start over. All right. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 257 of the Security Podcast here on the In30 Network. I'm Hiam. Tom is with his Ghostbuster shirt on. I'm, I'm here. There. I'm right here. That's who I call, either Tom or cool. Ghostbusters. It's, it's either the same one. thing, really. Yeah. Um, I do both. There was a daily deal of all the Ghostbuster episodes yesterday. I did not get it because Ooh. spinning discs are no more for me. I am done with spinning discs. Yeah, yeah, I, I do, I do agree. Um, although I do have to say, in in the land of Ghostbusters, I got two very nice presents uh, from from my wife. One is the official Tobin Spirit Guide, which I'm sure you can't see at all because this is a green screen and this book is very green. Yeah, this is totally clear. <laughs> um, <laughs> But it's got uh, it's got pictures of ghosts and stuff in in text. That's cool. Uh, but the thing that you'd be interested in is a non-transparent uh, Ghostbust the uh, Ghostbusters Ectomobile Owner's Workshop Manual. Um, so you can which work in, on this car. Exactly, which includes just about everything you need to know about Ghostbusters technology. Um, it is ten out of ten. Fantastic book. Token Spirit Guide is good. Not as good as the Acto One manual, so uh, I'm I'm pretty happy about this. So yes, uh, who are you going to call? We're going to call either Tom or Ghostbusters, and that would be the same thing. Uh, so so Tom's over there somewhere, but anyway, we got two things today, and right before the holidays, I do want to give you this is the FYI to if you got some sort of device that is potentially connected to the internet for some some little person in your holidays, please take it out of the box and update it. I got my son for Hanukkah the Lego Mario set where it has Mario and it just connects to the app on the thing. Required a 20 minute firmware update. So telling a seven year old that he has to wait 20 minutes or some unknown amount of time which ended up being 20 minutes is a problem. So if you're going to wake up on, uh, I guess, Friday morning, on Christmas morning, and have to download a one gig update to your PS5, you are not going to be happy. So if you can do that now, do it now. It's okay. They won't know that the box was open. Uh, say it's frustration-free packaging or something like that and get it updated. That would be the right answer. This is just your yearly service reminder because this is a thing. Especially with video games, most AAA video games today are going to have what's called a day one patch, where on launch day or soon after it launches, like we're talking anywhere from one to 20 to 100 gigs, depending on the game. Uh, so, yeah, if you got, you know, the uh, a PlayStation 5 and the latest Fortnite and you want to make sure that your kids can jump right into the action right away, um, just launch the game or uh in the console settings you know it's going to vary by device type and manufacturer obviously but whatever their check for updates option is make sure that the games are ready to go because trust me as an avid gamer nothing sucks more than getting super excited on launch day you hit that button and you're hit with the 
three hours remaining downloading 30 gigs. Ooh, it just, it just stings, you know, especially after like either getting a gift or spending some money to download a game. So, you know, it really stings that we can't, you can't play cyber cyberpunk 2077 anymore. Uh, so you can, if you don't have a PlayStation, um, if you've already bought it, you still have it, obviously, and you will be getting updates. But if you haven't bought Cyberpunk 2077 yet on the PlayStation, you currently cannot get it digitally because the game is fundamentally broken for PS4s. Um, so I thought there was some bug that like somebody got sued or something and it's unavailable everywhere. No, 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 no. 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 Oh, okay. You can you can still buy it. Uh just about anywhere uh it's pulled off of the playstation store because the ps4 version is currently broken okay so so if you were going to play that on christmas morning i guess you're not (laughs) uh yeah yeah Uh, and by the way um cyberpunk 2077 for all parents out there uh not a child-friendly game uh not only does it have the big m stamped on the box that says mature 17 or older um but it's also just generally not a child appropriate game lots of adult themes lots of adult scenarios basically if you're okay with your kids watching game of thrones without like any interruption or parental intervention whatsoever you'll probably be fine with cyberpunk but if that's not the case you might want to wait on this one my my son found spongebob we told him no spongebob he found (laughs) spongebob And it's not that I don't want him watching SpongeBob. I just want him to watch literally anything else before watching SpongeBob. So every once in a while, I'm walking by and and I go, um, I hear it. And and he goes, but he's silly. And I go, that's the point. I don't want that. (laughs) And I feel bad because SpongeBob is a a quality show, but it is is very silly. Anyway, we're, we're six minutes into this and we're not getting anything done. So the very first thing of news that just broke is, um, well, let's go even before that. We were talking about solar winds. Just to recap, uh, it's really bad, and it's clearly, it's clearly a nation state, and it's clearly going on, and and it's going to go on for a while because we don't, we literally don't know how bad it is yet. So, just going to give you give you an update on that. We'll probably bring another update in two weeks when we record next, but. It's still really bad. Anyway, first topic, the BBC, which is generally a very good news source. I mean, usually that's that's usually what I go to first is was saying that signals encryption was broken. And of course, that's the the clickbaity headline. And that got us all wound up. And then we read it. And it came from Haaretz, which a Celio Brighton Israeli company. Haaretz is a very liberal, which we found out doesn't mean the same thing in different countries. It's a very, very, uh, in America, very left-wing organ, uh, paper. And it was, spying is bad, people doing bad things are bad, but still, Celio Brighton is doing this and they're selling it to nation states and they're going after dissidents and everything else. So they reported that there was this blog post on the Celio Brighton website on how they can do this. And then they're saying, and they wouldn't give any details. And the BBC just blanket reported that. And that got Moxie Marlin Spike really, really angry. And and we're going to link in the show notes. You can see it there. Basically, if you, for the people who don't want to read any more into it, if you have an unlocked Android phone in your possession with the screen on, you can see messages. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> what is happening? Wait, I mean, hold on. Oh, wait, let want. me let me let me see if this works on iPhone too. Okay, so we all know that WhatsApp also uses uh, the Signal protocol for end-to-end message encryption, right? Okay, so I just open up WhatsApp, I open up the security in thirty chat, and oh, oh my God, look, unencrypted messages. There's unencrypted messages right here. They're on the screen. I can read them in plain text. This is outlandish. Somebody, somebody should do something about this. I'm going to call my representative. This is a situation where someone is holding an unlocked phone in their hands and could simply open the app to look at the messages. So we've always said, if the person has your phone, if they have physical access, that's one problem. Okay. So if somebody has your computer or whatever it is, physical access is a huge problem because it's somewhere you have to send... 
for Signal to decrypt anything, they need to have the key. It has to be decrypted at some point, but that's if they have physical access and the app is apparently open. Um, so it was one of those, it doesn't, basically they hook this thing up to the machine that takes screenshot after screenshot, like progressively just screen 24 frames a second screenshots of everything going on. And that's how they're getting it. And it's just like, wait, that's it. That's what they're doing. If you had an unlocked phone, that's what they get. So we're going to post the thing in the, we're going to post a signal response in the, in the, what's it called? In the, in the show notes, we, we're not going to link to the BBC article, but it was very annoying that, the, that no one actually contacted signal because they replied very quickly and did their, their journalistic duty. And here comes Moxie Marlin spike and signal saying that's all they did. It's if the phone is unlocked, by the way, this is only on Android. So on iPhone, they can't, they still can't get in. So that, that's the, that, that's what I don't get. It was just now granted, they said the blog post was deleted and then the Wayback machine got it. And maybe it was deleted on purpose because it was a stupid article. Maybe it was like, wait, you can't really post this and get people to think that you're like worth anything. So not to say that Celebrate is not doing other work. I mean, they may have other things going on that they don't want to report on yet, but this is an, I guess they call it a nothing burger. I guess that's the right term, a nothing it's, burger. Yeah, it's a, a nothing burger with a pseudo salad on the side. The problem Very is you're going to... non-essential yeah. dressing. The problem is you're going to go to a family dinner uh, soon, uh, hopefully before uh, you listen to the you'll hear this i'll put this out before friday but you're going to go to family dinner and they're going to we're going to say how signal is broken and you can't use it and this and that and the other thing and that's not true and here is moxie marlin spike realizing this and signal putting out there saying this is still we are still safe if um if you're at all used to reading tech news like i am um I, I would really highly suggest that you check out the Signal blog post, even if it's not really something you are interested in, because it's just kind of amazing to watch Moxie Marlin Spike not do the standard tech reporting of, okay, we're going to hold some cards back and we're going to use corporate platitudes and, oh, this is inaccurate. No, nah, no. Nah. He, like, rips into them raw. Like this is not a like it's it's safe for work, right? But it's not a standard corporate speak message. This is Moxie Marlin Spike literally saying that Celebrate is just garbage enterprise software. Um, it is uh, frankly a fantastic and beautiful takedown. Uh, not only does he rip into Celebrate um, for the original claim, but Really, the main target of Moxie's ire here is the BBC, who we have pointed out typically does really, really good reporting. In this case, they literally just took a blog post that was a nothing burger, tried to blow it up into a something burger, and it turns out it's not very filling regardless of the shape. Um, so Moxie does rip real hard into the BBC's lazy reporting here. So no, Signal is not broken. Um, but it turns out that, yes, you too can acquire your friend's Signal messages if you have their phone and it's unlocked and the app is open and you can scroll through it. So, so yes. if you, So if you want to, you could do disappearing messages. So one of the mitigation factors that Moxie puts out there is, uh, because, is disappearing messages. So on some people... On most people, I think I have disappearing messages to last a week. I mean, a week is good enough. If you, it's whatever you're talking about, you're not scrolling up anyway. So after a week, it's fine. Um, it's that, that may not be, if, if Signal is your, this is going to be really secure, your, your real platform for real security, setting it to a week is probably ex more than acceptable. Um, WhatsApp also, by the way, uses the Signal protocol. I am not 100% sure. So Facebook's secret area uses the Signal protocol, but they have this new thing called vanishing messages, which I will figure out later. Somebody asked me in the WhatsApp chat and I'll, I'll try and figure it out over the break. But I think this vanish is their new way of trying to do the Signal protocol, but not being so difficult on it. It's like you swipe up to get this like disappearing message type system. Um, 
but and then i guess google alo doesn't exist anymore uh oh did they RCS, finally get rid of that i think they did i think google rcs uses the signal protocol they're encrypted um, now the text to text w w ask us in the yeah. whatsapp group and we will figure it out for you because i know i know they're moving to end to end encryption but i don't know if it's yeah. a signal protocol exactly i hope it is because that's current state of the art i mean that would be awesome but again uh, we've said this enough times if you're on iphone iphone to iphone yes apple controls the keys and if you're just uh ordering lunch with a couple friends or whatever it is that is you're encrypted beyond what you could possibly want if it's on things like lunch and things like that your chipotle order is safe from state sponsored actors <laughs> If you want to make sure that nobody can read it, then yes, you would absolutely need to move to something that has Signal uh, uh, put in there. With that said, Signal is is a nice implementation. It's still harder to use than you would think, but it is getting better every iteration. So again, we have a WhatsApp group. You can ask us, join it. We'll talk to you about whatever you want, as long as it's related to security and Go on from there. So that was the first story. The second story, Apple published a guide, and I think they do this every once in a while, on how to keep your iPhone secure. Um, so they published this, uh, I don't know, it's like 20 pages. Uh, yeah, 20 page guide on how to do this. Um, we'll post it again in the show notes. It is a quick read, so it's not gonna tell, it's not gonna be too long, and they give a lot of excellent screenshots. So I'm just reading the contents and we can talk about it. First thing, always, on all your devices, and a lot of this goes for all your devices, update your software. You're getting a new, if you're getting a new phone on Friday, um, if you're going to your, see people who need help, uh, make sure everything's updated. iOS 14 is the current latest update. Android, if you can update, you're on 11, you're on 11, I think. I think you're on 11 or 12. Uh, let's, let's see, latest Android version. The second thing, if you're not updated or you're stuck and you just wanna blow everything away and start over, how to restore your device, right? Yes, Android 11. Um, now, how to protect your device. So there are a couple things there that you wanna do. Uh, and again, this document will tell you how to exactly do it. That's the old, that's the problem with screenshots. If it's like one version behind, everything's in all different places. Yeah. Face ID, passcode. Um, I know face ID is really annoying with masks on, um, but hopefully masks will not be too much longer. Hopefully, I mean, uh, set up a passcode if you want. Set up more than a four-digit passcode. I think uh, iOS defaults you to now six. So find some sort of thing to make it more than four. Yeah, so. mine, mine is currently six. I think that's the longest I can have right now, I think. Let me let me check I'm it. Not, no, you can do uh, the keyboard. So what some people you can do, do keyboard. is a passcode, is a passphrase, and it brings up the keyboard. And if you just want to do numbers, you have the top row for the numbers, but... When you're at six, that's a million tries. I mean, yeah. it's a, that's a million tries, and it and it and it will format after ten, and that's after it delays and everything else. So, and if you're wearing a mask, trying to type that out to do all the stuff, you have to weigh your convenience with that. So, I'm not going to tell you that you should have passcode on, uh, passphrase on. Passcode is probably good enough, but make it six characters. Yeah. Um, I'm checking maybe. right now to see if if I can uh, let's see passcode and can I change it? And we've said over and over, Face ID is they've done it right. They didn't. They everyone who's looked at it said it's done right. Where you can't be sleeping, you can't. It can't be a picture of you. It works in the dark, which is knowing they're doing some sort of infrared thing. Uh, mm. The secure enclave is there, so. So there haven't been any secure enclave attacks. So there's, so it is really, really secure. And when we say really secure, like we say, Signal is still uncrackable. We're talking about this very instance. We don't know of any exploits at this moment. Tomorrow there could be, but as of right now, all of this is safe. So uh, it looks like, yeah, you can have variable length pins. So uh, I just changed mine to eight characters, but it, the text field itself looked fairly unlimited. And when I went to unlock my phone, it 
looked like the UI changed a little bit instead of showing like the six dots that I'm used to seeing. Um, let's see, it keeps keeps grabbing my face and trying to throw my phone away. Um, yeah, it's just like a blank text box. So yeah, if you want to set up, uh, we recommend at least six. But if you want to go crazy, you can. Uh, by the way, don't don't one two three four. Please don't. That's that's not a pin. If it's one two three four, just leave the thing unlocked. Like, come on. If you ask, uh, if you ask the lady of the phone whose iPhone this is, sometimes she'll tell you. So when someone loses their phone, the first thing you can do. Oh, what I used to do is, uh, hey, madam, call mom. Yeah. Say, if mom picks up, say, hey, I have your, I have, I don't know whose phone this is, but your mom. So yeah. tell whoever that is that that I'm the teacher and I have their phone to not freak out. <laughs> and then somebody at the secretary's office said, no, no, just ask uh, the lady in the phone to say, whose phone is this? And they'll tell you. I'm like, oh, that's hey, phone wrong. lady, who owns this iPhone? Yeah, and it'll, and it'll, give, you the, it'll give you the host name. Uh, then they talk about your Apple ID. Now, the problem is, is that you put your Apple ID in every time you get a phone, and that's generally it. Because you use your touch ID or you use your finger. Um, you really should know your Apple ID and password. Uh, get mm -hmm. You should know it. They implement two-factor really well, so you should feel comfortable turning it on. They'll text message you. They'll give you a prompt. Apple did a really good way of doing it. I'm not 100% sure of the security and how they do it, but like I don't know if it's web, uh, was it authentication or however they do it, but... It's, it's, it's a custom thing. It's not web authen or yeah. anything like that. But like it brings up a little map that says this is where you're asking from. So I mean, so you can look around and say, "Hey, this is where it is." I did get freaked out once because it wasn't at my house, but I was at, at work. And I didn't realize that, so I'm like, "Oh no, somebody's coming!" And I'm like, "Oh, yeah." <laughs> okay. Uh, it's also funny if you use a VPN. Sometimes it would like if you're on a VPN and you've disabled location services for a while and you're trying to get into something else or you're signing into the web. Sometimes it'll show you a different location because of the spot where your browser exits the net. Um, so yeah, that's that's always fun to keep an eye out for. And then the next thing is if you don't recognize the sign in location, you can hit don't allow or whatever it is. They use Johnny Appleseed as their uh, as their their fake customer. I, I want to know. John, I want to. I I want to know if Johnny Appleseed has like a fake office in in Cupertino somewhere. Like, like this is John. Like, is there a face behind Johnny Appleseed? I mean, if you don't know what that's from, it's a children's book uh, where Johnny Appleseed walked across the plains of the United States, throwing seeds, growing apple trees, and was given the name John. His name was John, and he planted apple seeds. Uh, the next thing, this is a big thing with uh, check your privacy settings. So if you go into settings and you go to privacy, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So Apple and, and there's a side story with Apple and Facebook now going after each other. Apple really wants location services off on just about everything. So they, and tracking. So they make it really hard for apps to actually access those. So on first launch of an app, it says, hey, would you like to share your location? And it says only in the app once or never. And you should probably just do all, when you're in the app because a lot of apps do need some sort of location, whether it's a weather app or, or something else like that. Um, and then well, if you grant what I what I really love about it is that like when you're using like Uber or Lyft or a taxi service, right? Does Uber need to know my location 24 hours a day? No, of course not. Do they need to know the location so they can pick me up and you know? drop me off and track the ride along the way. Yeah, so when I have the app open, that's my privacy setting is, yes, you can use my location, but only when I've got this thing open and only when I'm using it. Otherwise, you don't get access, which I think is a fantastic middle ground for most applications. So the problem is, is that, so that's what I wanna, I wanna strive for that in all my apps, but there are other apps that really do need them open sort of all the time. And those are one of apps. Yeah. Well, so like, like you said with Uber, the problem is that I think if you turn the phone off, not turn off the phone, but if, okay, you get your Uber and then you uh, go to Facebook or something, I think it shuts off the locations, which is a little weird, but your mileage may vary, but be aware just if you're going to go play with it, know where it is because you constantly want to be doing that. And if, 
And yes, if you can turn off location on as many as you can, do it. If you don't need it, then when it's open, give it your location. That's fine. Um, and, and keep in mind, like these settings are super easy to toggle on and off. Uh, most, most of the time, if an app really needs something, it's going to pop up and say, hey, click here to go to settings. I need this to do this thing. So don't be afraid that, oh, no, I clicked an option and now my entire phone is broken forever. That's not how these work. It's really hard to truly get your phone into a state where it's impossible to use or it's, it's broken and requires a reset, right? So if you want to just default to the most private option, right? Like, hey, does this application really need location services? It's like, okay, well, for this one feature, but if I never use that, then I can just shut it off, right? Default to the to the most private, the most closed thing that you can, and then open it back up if needed, because it's really easy. It's, it's literally a toggle away, and most of the time the app is going to tell you, hey, click here because I need this. And a lot of the good apps will say, uh, we're going to present you with a screen to turn on location. This is why. Or we need access to your camera, literally to take a profile picture. I mean, they will actively say what they do it. And the, some of them will even say, okay, after you do this, you can go turn it back off. Yeah. I mean, and then, so in this in this uh, screenshot here, you can see all the different things, actually contacts and calendars and photos. What I now like is the local network. So if an app goes like, would you like it to find stuff on the local network? And the answer is always no. But basically what it's saying is like like Plex or an Apple TV app or Roku or whatever, it needs to find stuff on your local network. But if you don't, if it's just a regular app, WhatsApp doesn't need to find things on my local network. So it doesn't get that permission. But you have all of these. And the other cool thing is if you didn't notice, on a, I think it's on iOS 14, there's a green dot on the top, the top right by the battery. So if the camera is on, it's either a green dot or an orange dot. They mean two different things. Uh, I don't know how far back that goes because I don't know if that green dot was everywhere, but it's on. It, it I, times I it out after back. a little bit. No, but what I'm saying is it's like not, a, I don't know if it's on an iPhone eight, like how mm, far back yeah. a generation it goes. I know I it's on the, just I, an, an OS level setting, but I could be wrong. Oh, so you think, I, I see, I'm thinking it's an actual like, sensor light behind the glass and you're oh, saying no you it's a pixel no it's just no, a pixel just, just a uh -huh. pixel yeah okay so it probably goes back as far as it can i mean that's really nice to say to see that there to say hey something's going on um the health data the other stuff all right then they have find my app find uh they have find my so you can do your if you set that up with your with either your friends or your location, that's always good. But again, just trust the people that you do this with. Don't just accept every friend requ request. Uh, I mean, what I like to do in WhatsApp when I, in WhatsApp when I drive, I like to share my location so people know when I'm driving how close I am. I like the the time based sharing rather than the it's always on. Yeah. And then if you this, lose your uh, phone and different things. This also walks you through how to uh, how to delete, you know, random third party applications you might have on your phone or stuff you just don't need anymore. I've actually noticed that my phone automatically, if I haven't used an app in some time, and this actually happened to uh, uh, to my app for Lyft. Um, you're right. Like I've been in this apartment since March. I'm not really taking Lyft rides anywhere this year. Um, so it just got uninstalled. iOS said, "Oh, you haven't used this in." six months i'm gonna go ahead and remove it so keep that in mind it, it is kind of one of those you know it's beneficial for me yeah in that use case but for one that like this one app that i used very rarely but i still wanted it there i had to go through and download it again which was slightly annoying but not earth shattering definite first world problem okay let's we're gonna start into like the heavy the heavy lifting now uh delete next is delete apps that you don't use they're gonna be there they're not going anywhere but delete them um, I wouldn't throw them to your app library, like physically remove them off your phone. They'll be in your cloud account. Um, I'm not saying like if you deleted, a, if you had a game, you beat it, whatever it is, if there's, if, uh, they have some sort of uh, iCloud syncing, it'll still be there. Um, but it, like, if you haven't played a game for six months and you don't plan it, just delete it. Um, you never know what happens. <clears throat> I, uh, when I was moving Android phones, all of a sudden it, 
some weird uh, utility app downloaded. And the next thing I know, I'm getting all this notification spam. And it took me forever to realize it was some uh, conversion tool that some person wrote back on day one of some app store and got purchased and they were just throwing notifications out. So you just don't want that. You don't want any notifications like that. You don't want anything maybe sucking your data. So just if you're not using it, get rid of it. Let's see. One of the one of the more helpful things I see in here are these checklists. So uh, hmm. this guide has three pre-built checklists. One for uh, if you want to see if anyone else has access to your device or accounts, um, and they literally go through like steps one to like one through five. Here's exactly what you click. Here's what you go to. Here's what you look for. Um, and they're they're really nicely written. It it's not to me. It looks like this is easy enough for just about anyone who knows what these things are called, like knows what the settings menu is, right? Like somebody brand new to the platform, obviously this isn't really going to help them, but uh, for somebody who knows what they're doing or has a slight idea of how to navigate, these are perfect. It's not filled with a whole lot of technical jargon. Um, so uh, the two other checklists are uh, if you want to you know, stop sharing with somebody who you had previously shared with, like location history or activity data, whatever. Um, or if you want to make sure that no one else can see your location, um, it goes through steps on how to make that happen, which is really cool. Those are basically, I, I would say the top three, I want to make sure that my phone isn't leaking something. Um, or I want to make sure that, you know, my phone is as secure as the default will allow. Um, again, it's not, it's not going to make your phone hack proof. It's not going to make it bulletproof. Um, there's, there's really no such thing as hack proof in this day and age. Um, it's going to get but, you to the, to the, where you don't miss a stupid step. It's exactly. Like, it's not going to be an unforced error type thing. Like you're not going to be uh, like the share it. You shared with someone back in the day to test something out and then you forgot. And then they know that, uh, things like that. They're, they're checking to make sure that your calendars aren't shared to get you in trouble or some photo isn't shared. Now, Take these checklists and apply it to Android. I mean, they're not going to go exactly the same way, but Android has fairly similar permissions at this point. There is parity. You may not be able to do everything there, but absolutely try to do this. And, and it should take you further because a lot of these go on everything. You, you did something years ago. Let's say you shared with your spouse and then you got divorced. Hey, you're sharing those same app. You're sharing those same apps. So are you in some random family plan that you want to get off of? Just little things like that. So this is a really good guide. We're going to put this in the show notes for you to follow. It is a PDF. So just you're going to be downloading a PDF, but you can search it up if you want. Anyway, uh, with that said, we are out of time. So so uh, I have nothing else unless Tom has something last to say. This, this thing is this uh, PDF from Apple. It's easy enough that if, if you have somebody who's kind of technical in your family, but it's not the primary tech person that everybody goes to. Like if you're in that spot, this is a list that I honestly would send like my uncle or my cousin to go walk through with people. Um, like I know in these socially distant times, we might not be able to, you know, get to places to check out grandma's phone. But if you've got somebody who can read and follow directions, Hey, this thing might be, uh, the the perfect ticket this holiday season to uh, keep things a little bit more secure than they would otherwise be. So with that said, we're going to end. We're over time. So everyone have a, whatever, a happy holiday, whatever you want to celebrate. If it's Festivus today, we're recording on Festivus tonight. Just letting everyone Indeed. know. I do have, have a, a, I think I steel pole over there. So I'm ready. My friend, my friend Pete has an actual Festivus poll that I'm very jealous of. And every year I say I'm going to get another, I'm going to get one. Anyway, with that said, uh, we wish everyone a happy holidays and a happy new year. And we will see most likely back uh, in 2021, which hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we'll start off on a positive note. <laughs> I'm hoping. Here's to hoping. The bad dream will end. The bad dream will end and we will hope <laughs> and, and th good things will happen. So, Oh, let's say bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> See everyone. Let me turn off Twitch.